there are three challenges in the three main challenges in machine learning. The first one is, uh, you know, getting machines to learn to represent the world, um, and I'm proposing self-supervised learning. Mm -hmm. uh, the second is uh, getting machines to reason in ways that are compatible with essentially gradient-based learning, because this is what deep learning is all about, really. Mm -hmm. um, and the third one is something we have no idea how to solve, at least I have no idea how to solve, is uh, can we get machines to learn hierarchical representations of action plans? You know, like, you know, we know how to train them to learn hierarchical representations of perception, you know, with convolutional nets and things like that and transformers. But what about action plans? Can we uh, get them to spontaneously learn good hierarchical representations of actions? Also gradient-based. Yeah, uh, all of that, has, you know, needs to be somewhat differentiable so that you can apply sort of gradient-based learning, uh, which is really what deep learning is about. So it's background, knowledge, ability to reason in a way uh, that's differentiable that is somehow connected, deeply integrated with that background knowledge or builds on top of that background knowledge. And then given that background knowledge, be able to make hierarchical plans right. in the world. So if, if you take classical optimal control, there's something in classical optimal control called uh, model predictive control. And it's, you know, it's been around since the early 60s. NASA uses that to compute trajectories of rockets. And the basic idea is that you have a, pre a predictive model of the rocket, let's say, or whatever system you are, you intend to control, which given the state of the system at time t and given an action that you're taking on the system, so for a rocket it would be thrust and you know all the controls you can have, uh, it gives you the state of the system at time t plus delta t, right? So basically a differential equation, something like that. Um, and if you have this model and you have this model in the form of some sort of neural net, or some sort of uh, set of formula that you can backpropagate gradient through, you can do what's called model predictive control or gradient-based uh, model predictive control. So you have uh, you can unroll that uh, that model in time. You 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 feed it a hypothesized sequence of actions, and then you have some objective function that measures how well at the end of the trajectory the system has, has succeeded or matched what you wanted to do. Um, you know, is it a robot harm? Is, have you grasped the object you want to grasp? Uh, if it's a rocket, you know, are you uh, at the right place near the space station? Things like that. Um, and by backpropagation through time, and again, this was invented in the 1960s by optimal control theorists, uh, you can figure out uh, what is the optimal sequence of actions that will, uh, you know, get my system to the, the best final state. So... That's a form of reasoning. It's basically planning. And a lot of uh, planning uh, systems in robotics are actually based on this. Uh, and, uh, uh, and you can think of this as a form of reasoning. So, you know, to take the example of the teenager driving a car again, you have a pretty good dynamical model of the car. It doesn't need to be very accurate. But you know, again, that if you turn the wheel to the right and there is a cliff, you're going to run off the cliff, right? You don't need to have a very accurate model to predict that. And you can run this in your mind and decide not to do it for that reason because you can predict in advance that the result is going to be bad. So you can sort of imagine different scenarios and, uh, and then you know, employ uh, or take the first step in the scenario that is most favorable and then repeat the process of planning. That's called receding horizon model predictive control. Mm -hmm. So even, you know, all those things have names you know, uh, going back you know, decades. Um, and so if you're not, not a, you know, in classical optimal control, the model of the world is not generally learned. Uh, there's, you know, sometimes a few parameters you have to identify. That's called systems identification. But, um, but generally, the model is mostly deterministic and mostly built by hand. So the big question of AI, uh, I think the big challenge of AI for the next decade is how do we get machines to run predictive models of the world that deal with uncertainty and deal with the real world in all this complexity. So it's not just the tra trajectory of a rocket, which you can reduce to first principles. It's not, it's not even just the trajectory of a robot arm, which again, you can model by you know, careful mathematics, but it's everything else, everything we observe in the world, you know, people, behavior, um, you know, physical systems that involve collective phenomena like water or, or you know, trees and you know, branches in a, in a tree or something, or, or uh, like complex things that you know humans have no trouble developing abstract representations and predictive model for, but we still don't know how to do with machines. Where do you put in 
in these three, maybe in the in the planning stages, the the game theoretic nature of this world, where your actions not only respond to the dynamic nature of the world, the environment, but also affect it. So if there's other humans involved, is this is this point number four, or is it somehow integrated into the hierarchical representation of action in your view? I think it's integrated. It's just um, it's just that now your model of the world has to deal with you know it just makes it more complicated, right? The yeah. fact that uh, humans are complicated and not easily predictable that makes your model of the world much more complicated. That much more complicated. Well, there's a chess. I mean, I suppose chess is an analogy. So uh, Monte Carlo tree search. I mean, right. you, it, there is a I go, you go, I go, you go. Like um, Andre Karpath recently gave a talk at MIT about car doors. <laughs> I think there's so much machine learning too, but mostly car doors. And there's a dynamic nature to the car, like the person opening the door, checking. I mean, he wasn't talking about that. He was talking about the perception problem of what the, the ontology of what defines a car door, this big philosophical question. But to me, it was interesting because like, it's obvious that the person opening the car doors, they're trying to get out, like here in New York, trying to get out of the car. You slowing down is going to signal something. You speeding up is going to signal something. And that's a dance. It's a asynchronous chess game. I don't know. <laughs> so I, it feels like... Um, it's not just, I mean, I guess you can integrate all of them into one giant model, like the entirety of the, the, the these little interactions. Cause it's not as complicated as chess, it's just like a little dance. We do like a little dance together and then we figure it out. Well, in some ways it's way more complicated than chess because, right. uh, because it's continuous, it's uncertain in a continuous manner. Uh, it doesn't you know, feel more complicated. But Feels it doesn't simple. feel more complicated because that's what we're we've evolved to solve. This is the yeah. kind of problem we've evolved to solve, and so we're good at it because you know nature has made us good at it. 